Klingon D7 Battle Cruiser. It's a snap together kit, skill level two. This is the box art of the top cover. The uh, side cover gives a different view. The bottom showing the base. And the other side. End panel. Up the box. First brew is uh, chrome parts. It's also a small bag with uh, two little red indicators that are on the uh, bridge area of the ship. Next bag. Next bag of uh, sprues. Bridge area, the neck with the bulbs assembly, work drive, the cells, engineering section with the cone, with also the uh, uh, hangar bay. top side of the uh, bridge section. Photon emitter screw. Then we come to the last bag. Okay, we open this last bag. <coughs> There's the uh, stand. the typical Klingon arrangement and here's the uh, upper and lower parts of the hull. This kit also includes a set of decals. This will uh, allow you to build this model in either one of two different configurations. One is the Klingon D7 and the other uh, is the Romulan uh, version. Uh, they did adopt the D7 design uh, in uh, the original series, Star Trek the original series, and we're using uh, the Klingon D7 design in their own variation with the uh, unique bird markings for the for their ship. Another set of uh, stick-on type decals. So you actually get the decals in both the stick-on and the water slide depending on uh, user preference. The instructions uh, are pretty straightforward. Single sheet, one large single sheet. Uh, I'm not going to get into much detail in these instructions because uh, like most Polar Light kits, these are available on the Polar Light's website uh, if you'd like to download those and take a closer look before purchasing the kit. Uh, one thing this kit is uh, fairly small. This, this kits go uh, pretty simple to build uh, <coughs> and 
it's also relatively cheap, so uh, uh, it's it's a good value to say that's a good value. Uh, I think uh, I paid like sixteen dollars uh, for this kit. Okay, uh, the next step, I'm going to take all these parts uh, and put them in a soap bath, uh, soak them and wash them down good to make sure their uh, release agent is completely gone and that all the parts are clean uh, before proceeding with uh, further assembly and painting. Now that I've removed the model from the box, I actually have the decals loose. And that's not a very desirable way to have these decals. They are susceptible to moisture problems. And since I'm going to be cleaning the model in this area, uh, what I like to do with my decals and these are small so it's real easy is I use simple zip top sandwich bags got one out and I'll just drop, drop those things down in this sandwich bag seal them up and now they're protected and safe till they're ready for use this is a regular sandwich bag. I also have uh, the much larger bags to accommodate larger decals or different sizes of uh, pieces of the model in case I want to bag those up separately. Okay. One other item that I use is these uh, scouring pads comes in a 10 pack for a dollar at our everything is a dollar store. Uh, these are actually fairly large pads so what I'm actually going to do is take one of these and cut it in half uh, for using and cleaning the model. That's plenty, uh, especially for this small of a model to clean with. Uh, since there's 10 of those in the pack, this is a nickel pad, so if I decide to throw it away after I'm done, not much lost. One other thing that I use at the dollar store, it's pretty handy, is shoe boxes. Here's my cleaning bath. Uh, right now it's got a lot of suds in it. I don't actually have a tremendous amount of detergent in there. There's about uh, uh, three quarts of water and uh, about two tablespoons of dish detergent. But I had the water on high when I filled this up, and this is very warm water. I, I filled it with hot water. And I need to take these parts. Now, again, I have different sizes, but shoebox size is good, perfect for something this this size, and just dunk them in there. Clean them. Make sure they're all submerged. And now that's got them all except for the chrome components. And I'll be dealing with those in, in another process shortly. But uh, what I want to do is let these soak briefly. Okay, it's been a few minutes now, and these have soaked uh, in the wash. Yeah, I'm simply going to take this pad and uh, rub them off. Right now, it's not my intention to break them from the sprue, but if that happens, uh, no big loss. And the soak pretty much got them clean. But just as a, a little extra effort. Put these in now. And 
And now that I've got this one washed thoroughly, I have a, another shoe box off camera filled full of clean water. And I'll just dump those in it. Again, it doesn't take much because the soaking did most of the work for us. Just, I like to give them a light brushing uh, to make sure they're as clean as possible. Okay, now that we've got the uh, other parts washed and uh, passed through the rinse uh, to clean those, we're going to work on the uh, chromed parts. Uh, look, this model, I don't like the fact that these are chromed. I will be painting these so the thing I want to do now is, is to remove the chrome from the components and one way to do that is just go ahead and separate them somewhat from the sprue. I'm not going to take them completely away from the sprue. I'm going to take uh, the majority of the sprue off so we have less uh, to deal with as far as these parts are concerned, which means I'll use a little less chemical. Uh, no really, no real other reason than that. And uh, of course that will save a little money. So now I've got the parts, this plastic tray. And there's two uh, main ways that hobbyists use to remove chrome from parts. The uh, first one, is to basically make a bath of Clorox, uh, put your component parts in something like a little uh, sandwich box or small plastic box, and uh, put uh, full strength Clorox uh, in there with them and let them set about 12 hours. You might want to flip it over and let it get another 12 hours on the other side. Uh, there's another way that also works easy off oven cleaner or an oven cleaner uh, it, it does a pretty good job of getting the chrome off also and it's usually quite a bit quicker uh, if you do use this I recommend you uh, use uh, a mask uh, at minimum uh, a respirator uh, won't hurt because uh, it does produce quite a bit of fumes okay so, shake this up a bit. And basically saturate parts from the other part. Okay, it's uh, been a couple of hours now since I sprayed the uh, chrome bladed trim with the Easy Off. And as you can see, the uh, foam is settled. And there's a nice green color, which is the color of the plastic. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse the Easy Off off and I'll bring, bring it back right back and let you take a peek. Okay, here's the parts, and as you can see, even though they're still a bit wet, there is absolutely no trace of the chrome left on any of the parts. The parts themselves look fine, no damage to the plastic. So, Easy Out did do its job. It was uh, very easy, and it did take a couple of hours. It could have been less. I didn't check on them. I was doing some other things. But uh, anyway, with two hours wait, that's not bad. It would have been much longer with the uh, bleach, but it would, the bleach would have done an uh, equally good job. Okay? Okay. One other caution. Uh, I did notice, now that I've got the parts up, I normally do this outside on a... Uh, table that has a ceramic top. 
uh, but in this case, I did it on top of my cutting mat, and uh, it actually did remove the paint in several places, minor places, on the pad. Uh, no real harm done, but that is something you might be, want, want to be aware of uh, if you decide to go with the uh, easy. Okay, so now I have all the uh, components for the kit laid out on the table. I've got the uh, a heat gun. Uh, this is a trick that I learned from a trick modeler. Uh, used for drying paint, but you also used to expedite the drying of the water. Uh, one thing I also have found out, uh, this needs to be used very sparingly because it can damage uh, the surface of the model if you have prolonged exposure. This is capable of actually melting this plastic, uh, which is not good, but if it's used very sparingly, it will accelerate the uh, drying process. Okay, they're good and warm, but they're not hot. None of those pieces are actually getting hot to the top. Again, they're just very warm, not, not hot at all. Still uh, showing a little surface water, but the majority of it is gone, so I'm going to flip them over and do the other side. Also, just occasionally we'll take the parts, put a large plastic box, elevate it on a couple of corners to where it has some ventilation, cover them, and let them dry overnight. Uh, that's probably my, my preferred method, uh, but in order to try to get this video done, I was going to accelerate it uh, somewhat here, so I'm going to uh, draw these back parts. Okay, that's got the majority of the water off of the parts now, at least to the point that I don't feel bad about uh, putting them in a box uh, and starting to work on the component, the pieces that I need to work on. Again, feeling those, uh, they're just slightly warm. None of these are hot. Again, it's a, a good way to accelerate the drying process for both the water and paint. Just need to be very careful and realize that uh, a heat gun, like I was using versus a hair dryer, uh, can get higher than that to quickly melt that plastic. As a matter of fact, most common use that I use my heat gun for is heat crank tubing. Uh, so that uh, does give you an idea of the temperatures it's capable of. It will, it will shrink up a piece of heat crank tubing in just a few seconds. So uh, it will get very hot. But again, if you noticed, I kept the, my distance. I kept moving and checking the, the temperature of the parts to make sure that none of them were actually getting uh, anywhere near uh, getting soft or, or towards the melting point. Uh, just a caution. Okay? Alright, uh, again I've got all the pieces cleaned and I removed them from their uh, cardboard box, put them in this plastic shoe box. Uh, 
As I may have said before, I'm a big fan of these shoe boxes. They're a dollar. They have a cover that comes with them. I'll be using later on when I go to put this up. And for a dollar, it's hard to beat. I use these things for many, many different purposes. But in this case, it's a good place to put the components for this model.